This week in Nerf, we've got a Halo shotgun, Omega kit details, and a monster three-stage bullpup blaster. I'm Jangle, and this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Now, before we get into this week's news, I do want to uh, have a correction from last week. Now, I mentioned last week that Blaster Tech and Kelly Industries had produced eight-shot cylinders for the hammer shot, and I was talking about how it was nice to have some on the market now. Uh, somehow... I had failed to keep up with hammer shot improvements and there have already been several hammer shot eight shot cylinders on the market for a while now including uh, Gavin Fuzzy, Atch Attachments, and some options on Thingiverse and I'm sure there's more. So I want to apologize for making it seem as though there weren't options prior. Uh, I did make a mistake on that, uh, my apologies. but. It is important to me to correct my mistakes and provide you with the most complete and correct information that I can. So just wanted to take a moment, not to take anything away from what Blaster Tech and Kelly Industries have done with their versions, but there are a good amount of options out there. And I just wanted to address that real quick before we got into the uh, news for this week, because it's important to me. So with that said, let's go right on into it. And our first story is the Boomco Halo Blaze of Glory shotgun is available on Toys R Us online. Uh, F Justice posted on Reddit that they found this link up, and I'm pretty stoked about this blaster. This is pretty much, I think, what everyone has wanted from a Springer in the Boomco line. It's uh, a pump prime. It looks ergonomically comfortable. It's side loading, so you're not having your view obstructed by the clip as it goes up or down it just it looks cool it's got deco on both sides i mean this just looks and hopefully feels fantastic i know i'm pretty excited about it i'm sure there's a lot of boomco fans that have been waiting for something that are gonna be excited about this now it is coming in at about 40 dollars retail from toys r us um how what that price will be in in canada or overseas or other places i don't know but us it's running about 40 dollars and i'm Pretty excited about this. Now, I'm curious to see what the performance is like once you've upgraded the spring and done the uh, sniper clip modifications and all those things to get it performing, hopefully close to the M6 performance level. I know the Dynamags were never able to really get fully up to that M6 level, but if you can get close and get to a really solid war-worthy blaster, then this is going to be a fantastic piece that people will be picking up in mass. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. And hopefully, hopefully this will give Boomco a little bit of a boost. It's been a bit of a, a down year, it seems like. We haven't gotten much from them and people starting to question whether or not Boomco is going to continue to be around. And uh, hopefully this will give them a nice bump in sales, both because of the Halo name and because of the quality of the product that we're you know, crossing our fingers hoping for. But We'll see, time will tell. Now, next up, last week, I talked about the Jet Blasters Omega kit. And uh, I got in contact with Jet and got a little bit of information from them about the kit that I wanted to share with all of you. Now, first up, pre-orders are going to be going up at the first week of November. So not too far off, a little less than a month away for pre-orders. And they're aiming to start shipping in January. Now, I know this has been a big sticking point for a lot of things for... Uh, regarding Jet for a lot of people is that their uh, release dates aren't always what you expect or hope for. Now, hopefully they'll be continuing to learn and better and uh, get better with those release dates and we'll see things release on the date that they've specified and things will go smoothly. It would be good. I would like to see it for the company because... Um, I like the ideas they have, like I said last week, and I really want to see them continue to grow and improve as a company because I really like their ideas and their whole ecosystem they're trying to build. Now, not getting too far off topic, the price of this kit is going to be aimed at under $200. Now, I haven't gotten specification yet whether this is uh, in uh, SGD or USD. So if it's in the, the Singapore currency, then... That means for USD, it could range from anywhere from $130 to $150. So I don't know if I find out uh, within a reasonable amount of time, I will put that information in the links down below so you know what currency it's aiming at and what the actual price point were, will be for you to take a look at. Uh, now, the thing that's interesting to me is this kit is expected to take springs between 12 kg and 24 
excuse me, apparently I couldn't even believe it, 24 kg. So it's it's going to be something that will hopefully will take some hefty, hefty springs. If I'm uh, not wrong, I, I hopefully I'm not wrong in this one, but I believe a K26 is something around 14 kg to give, give an idea. Uh, I'm sure if I'm wrong, someone will correct me. Please do in the info. That's just what I remember seeing. So 24 kg, that's... That's a hefty spring load, and that's pretty awesome. Now, they do have to do some testing still to kind of iron that out completely and get the full details of what it'll be able to take, but if it can take 24 kg and maybe even a little bit higher, that's insane and awesome and uh, something that I think is pretty, pretty cool. Now, granted, I'm still relatively new into the higher power stuff, so... I don't know how high some people have gone, but I don't see many people talk too much about much higher than the low 20s in terms of spring load, at least commonly used. I'm sure there's people that use higher spring loads, but I mean, 24 seems like a fair amount. So I'm pretty excited and pretty curious to see how this performs. Uh, now they did say they will have some design details they will talk about once the pre-orders go up in terms of their choices and why they're doing certain things. So I'm looking forward to that and seeing their ideas or processes on how they're going about this. So with that said, uh, I guess there's actually one other thing or two other things for Jet really quick I wanted to talk about that I'll probably go into more next week uh, because these were just shared online right before I started filming this episode. And one is the Katana Mags. Uh, Jet released a file to 3D print some bumpers for Katana Mags as that is one of the common complaints is that there's no rubber bumpers on the base of them. Now, it's not rubber bumpers, but it is an extra 3D printed base that will hopefully absorb some of the shock if they are dropped. It's nice that they're trying to do something with that, but um, ideally maybe they'll do a revision or a Gen 2 of Katana Mags that'll have those rubber bumpers or extra, you know, durability options, but that's... Uh, it's nice that they're trying certain things. The other thing is they just announced another blaster, I think called the, the FAD, FAD FAB. I'll put on the screen the name. Uh, I just saw it. It looks like Jet Blaster's version of a drain blaster. Uh, I don't know any of the details yet. They just posted images with a bunch of different ammo types. So it looks like it's going to be compatible with just about everything. Uh, so, Keep an eye on that. We may be talking about that next week. But that's that's enough about Jet this week. Let's move on to Blaster Forge. Blaster Forge has been doing some crazy things lately uh, with the Aurora. And uh, on Facebook yesterday, they just posted some image images of a piece they're working on that is an auto priming attachment for a long shot, which is pretty ridiculous. And that that's currently the prototype is printing for that. So we're not going to go into deal with that today. But the other thing that they showcased this week on Instagram and is up on Etsy for pre-order is the Fenestrator. And this is, this is a beautiful monster. This is a three-stage bullpup flywheel blaster uh, that can hit up to 210 FPS on 3S. And uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It looks cool. It's three-stage flywheels, which if any of you have seen Hex, you know that means monster numbers, and uh, I'm, I don't know, I like their designs. I like Blaster Forge design ideas and, and, and uh, looks and all that, so I think it's really cool. Uh, it is going to be at a, a bit of a premium price because this is a 3D printed shell. Um, you can have it printed at different densities or, or micron layers, I believe it is, and that will vary the price, but it's starting at about $300 for this monstrosity. and. To be quite honest, that's not too terrible of a price. I think about uh, Eli Wu's Hex, and that is a blaster that's, if he were to make those and commission them, would be hundreds more than the Fenestrator. So I don't see that as an absurd price point. I think it's, you know, it's high end. But that's not a bad thing. It's good to have high-end options in this hobby. It gives people different tiers to look at if they don't want to build something themselves or, or want options on things. So I, I, I like this. I like what they're doing. And I look forward to seeing the performance and how these things feel once they're in the hands of uh, players. So I think that's cool. Definitely check that out if you're interested. Now, next year... End War is going to be happening again, and the announcement just happened this last week, 
and or 2018 will be happening in the same venue, Athens, Ohio, in 2018, June 22nd to 24th. That includes FoamCon, and uh, there is going to be a theme for this event. It hasn't been announced yet, but I am curious to hear about it. End War is just, it's cool. I like the idea of national events. I like, I like people getting together in a hobby and sharing that passion, sharing the joy that it brings, and just having a good time. So uh, I, I'm bummed I didn't get to go last year. I'm hoping I'll get to go this year. We'll see how things pan out, or next year I should say, but I'm just glad that we're seeing these national events happen again, and I'm hoping that as they continue to become more common, we will see more than one in a year. That is uh, something I would really like to see. I'd like to see something on the East Coast and the West Coast, and uh, maybe different game types, maybe a PvP game at one, and then the HVZ at the other, and you know, I, I, I want to see options for all the different players, and people do travel and play different games and play with different people and different groups and, and just continue to share the, the, the joy that this hobby brings with each other. So I'm excited about it. I think it's, uh, I think it's just overall good for the hobby. So that's cool. If you're going to go to End War again next year, let me know. I uh, definitely, like I said, I'm bummed I didn't make it last year, hopefully next year. That's going to bring us to the mod of the week. Last week we had Tetsuo, which is the Merge Masters 2 entry. This week we have another Merge Masters 2 entry, and this is from Exiled. This is the Scourge. This is one of the most beautiful blasters I have ever seen. The work on this blaster is just, it's just phenomenal. It's so clean. It's so, like, I mean, I know it, it, he did the paint job to make it, make it look worn and, and used, but it, the integrations, the lines, is so good. Oh my goodness, and this thing is, it's good on the inside and it's good on the outside. Uh, he, he's wired it up to have a two-stage straight two stage trigger. So halfway revs the motors and full starts shooting. Um, it's running a canted worker cage with Cronus X motors and a falconed rapid strike pusher mech. He also has a mini air compressor in it attached to a big salvo tank in a thunder blast shell. And there's just, there's so many shell pieces used from different blasters, you have to, Click the link down below, check out the work in progress pictures and the progression of it because this is, this is a piece of like master class work. There are people in this hobby that are just so talented and he is one of those people that the work they create really, I think, pushes others to do better. And this, this is one of those pieces that people are going to be looking at for a while and just, uh, it's going to make people want to go further and do better. And that to me is awesome. I, I just, yeah, it's just, it's so cool. I mean, he's even got the ammo counter up top right there housed in that shell that looks so, it looks like it belongs. And that's just really one of the things about this blaster is you just look at it and everything on it looks like it belongs there. It's supposed to be there. And that to me is it's a work of art. It's a masterpiece in terms of the nerf integration side of things, and I absolutely love it. And I, I just, I hope you will all go check out the firing demo. Check out the, the images, the work in progress, the posts, all of it. Uh, if you haven't voted in the Merge Masters Reddit competition yet, go take a look at all of them. Vote for your favorites. There's some really cool stuff in there. That's going to bring us to the video of the week. And since we had the end war announcement, I was thinking about national events and big events. And this video is not a nerf video. It's a video from foam fighting. I came from a foam fighting background. This is a video from Tussles. This is Chaos Wars 21. Now this is, I believe, a Belagarth event or DAG event, um, but it's foam fighting. So it's still foam. It's still, you know, kind of along the same lines, but this is where I came from. And this is something I love is seeing like I said, groups get together and share their joy, share their passion for a hobby. And I just, these videos are so entertaining to me. And it's another aspect of the foam hobby that I really want to share with people and share with everyone because I love doing this. I love nerfing as well. And I, I just, uh, I think they both share a bit of the same ecosystem. And I really, really enjoy this person's videos and their work. And I feel like if you enjoy nerf and you like melee in nerf, you'd probably enjoy some of the things that you'll see in this video. Some of the, the physical work that people do is just so impressive, along with some good videography and some, some just really fun, entertaining footage. 
uh, that kind of falls in, in the same topic of national events and large scale events of a hobby, bringing people together. So go check that out because that video is going to be right over here. That brings us to the end of the video. Let me know thought about everything. The Halo Blaster, the Jet Omega kit, the Fenestrator, uh, and or announcement, other foam hobbies. Let me know about all of it. I love hearing from all of you. And if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.